Uh, welcome to Drupal Ladder, resources and activities to help uh, meet up groups, uh, help their members learn and contribute. So uh, our project, our, our hope for the Drupal Ladder project here is to get 1% of active Drupal users contributing to Drupal Core by 2014. Um, by getting meetup groups to organize learn sprints and issue sprints at meetups and camps and conferences. My name is Brian Hirsch. I work for Acquia. Come on in. My name is Brian Hirsch. I work for Acquia. Um, I was the coordinator of the Boston-based pilot of this project back in the fall. And um, since then, since DrupalCon Denver in March, I've been working with folks like Karen and Addie and Brock to spread the project to other meetup groups. Um, and Kay. So um, before we dive in here, uh, if anyone's in the wrong room, now's a good time to find wherever you meant to be. And uh, if people are still moving around, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you guys some questions so that we can get a sense of who's in the room here with us. So can I just see by a show of hands how many people here have been to their local meetup? How many people are regulars at their local meetup? Nice. How many people have led their local meetup? How many people here had heard of the Drupal ladder before they came to DrupalCon Munich? Yes. <laughs> How many people have participated in a learn sprint or an issue sprint or a Drupal ladder activity? Nice. Uh, how many people have contributed to Core? Right on. How many people would like to contribute to Core? Show of hands. <laughs> Come on, really? Yeah. All hands should go up on that one. <laughs> okay, great. So. Um, during this session, I'm going to give an overview of the Drupal Ladder project. I'll catch you all up on where we've been, report back on the goals that we set for the project at DrupalCon Denver. And then I'll propose some ideas about where we're going and then introduce you guys to some uh, new members of our new steering committee who will talk to you about work that they're going to be leading between now and DrupalCon Portland. So, um, so with that, uh, overview. The problem is we need more people. Uh, as Dries said in his keynote back in Denver, the talent pool is too small. This is one of the three biggest challenges that Drupal faces right now. The demand for Drupal talent outstrips the supply. If we look at this through the lens of the issue queue, um, here are some graphs that I shared with the Boston user group that Jess actually <laughs> prepared, which I got off her blog, um, after DrupalCon uh, London last summer. So, the, the rate of people contributing to core is going up. The, the number of people con contributing to core is going up year after year, release after release. But as a percentage of total users on Drupal.org, the number is going way down. And so as Drupal's popularity skyrockets, there are more users creating more tickets, suggesting more ideas, and it's impossible for contributors to keep up. So uh, last summer, eight months after Drupal 7 was released, there were 9,000 open issues in the core issue queue. This tiny green sliver represents issues that were reviewed and tested by the community out of that 9,000. The 17%, the big yellow section, represents 1,600 tickets sitting in the issue queue waiting to be reviewed. So people have written patches and they're waiting to be reviewed in the, in, in the queue. So, um, as a result, people who were involved in the Drupal 7 development process were feeling really exhausted. And if you step into the shoes of a site owner or a business owner or an NGO or a government agency who runs a Drupal site, this can be really frustrating too. And not just because of the rate at, at which we're closing or not closing issues in the issue queue. How many people here have uh, tried to hire a Drupalist for your, your own organization and have found it difficult to find someone with the Drupal chops you needed? for whatever your project was. How many people have tried to train people to, to learn Drupal in-house and found that to be a daunting or challenging task? So if we, for Drupal to, to continue to thrive and continue on the extraordinary trajectory that it's on right now, we really need to solve this problem. We need to figure out how we can grow the developer community and keep pace with the, the, the rate of growth of the user community. We need to figure out how we can get one out of 100 people on Drupal.org, one out of 100 active people on Drupal.org to be contributing to the, the project. So um, maybe that sounds ambitious, but here's why I think it's not crazy. If you look at this chart again of the decreasing percentage of users contributing to core, uh, 
it looks to me like we've dipped from around 0.5% during Drupal 4 down to around 0.1% today. So we can't know exactly what's happened here, but I think we can make some educated guesses. So let's just take a, a quick straw poll. How many people in this room think that there were a higher percentage of people contributing in Drupal 4 than there are now in Drupal 7? Because Drupal 4 was more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Laughable, right? How many people think that there are, were more people contributing back in Drupal 4 than there are now, sorry, a higher rate of people contributing because Drupal um, has become less useful? How many people think maybe there was a higher rate of contribution back in Drupal 4 uh, because working with Drupal has gotten less relevant or less profitable. So Drupal is clearly more profitable, more popular, more useful, you know, more relevant than ever before. Uh, we know this because the Obama White House is powering whitehouse.gov with Drupal. The, the bleeding edge federal government's open government initiative is, is essentially all powered by Drupal. Warner Music launched dozens of websites with Drupal earlier this year, including KidRock.com and BrunoMars.com. Um, I'd actually even go a step further and argue that people are trying harder than ever to learn about and to contribute to Drupal. I think there's lots of good anecdotal evidence for this. So look around us. Look at all the, the people spending time and money on trainings, on conferences. Um, the, the rate of, of um, the number of camps, the number of Drupal cons is increasing, meetup attendance is increasing. All arrows point toward you know, more people want to be involved. So the more you really think about it and look at this slide, the crazier this should seem. So what's going on? I think there's two things. Uh, first is that as Drupal gets more complex, as, as, as um, Drupal's code base becomes more complex, it becomes harder to contribute. So here is an image that has made its way around the interwebs that depicts Drupal's learning curve like a cliff, like this black line. So um, as Drupal gets more complex, we need to find ways to make it easier for people to learn about and contribute to Drupal if we want people to keep contributing. So the second thing is just that we haven't, we're just not, as a community, uh, we haven't been as effective at, at recruiting people into our developer community as we have been at recruiting people into our user community. <coughs> So the solution we want to throw on the table, or, or one of the, the solutions, a part of the solution, uh, is Drupal ladder activities. So um, there are a lot of people who want to contribute to core, but they don't. Either they don't feel like they know how, uh, they don't feel qualified, the time commitment feels prohibitive, or maybe they've just never been asked. So to try and lower these barriers and bring more people into the core project, the idea we came up with was, what if we come up with all the different ways that people contribute to core and organize those things like a ladder? And um, the first few steps should be easy for anyone to take. Each consecutive step should be within reach if you've taken the previous steps. Ideally, we'd come up with instructions that correspond with each rung on the ladder so that we can easily coach someone through taking the next st step on the ladder uh, or, or moving some issue forward somewhere in the issue queue. And the idea with the ladder activities is that they should also be things that you can do in a single sitting. So they are perfect Drupal user group meetup activities. So um, there are Drupal user groups around the world that meet regularly. And if we, if we could get every meetup group to dedicate some amount of time to working with, with their members, helping people climb the ladder, and helping people contribute, together we could move tons of issues in the issue queue forward, and we could you know, build more capacity, help people, you know, participating in the project and contributing at higher levels. So great, it would be great for everybody all around. So for a pilot, for the pilot project that we did last fall in Boston, we started with a, a single 14 rung ladder, which is still the main Drupal ladder on DrupalLadder.org. And the general, the general idea was that for any part of Drupal core, for any part of Drupal that is, down, that, that is included in what you download when you download Drupal from Drupal.org, you could take all 14 of these steps for any different component in core. So like the node system or the theme system. So this main ladder is like nuts and bolts stuff, uh, getting started in the issue queue, writing a patch, testing a patch, things that you would do to contribute to any different part of Drupal core. So um, the first steps on the ladder have very clear instructions. 
beginning with installing Drupal locally, then finding your way around the queue. Anyone can start at step one, and then by following all the instructions, reasonably work their way up through step five. And if you make it to step three or four or five, you've got some pretty powerful tools in your toolbox to start contributing to Drupal. So if you want to contribute user experience and usability ideas or design ideas, all you need to know is how to write a good issue and, how, and feel confident posting something in the issue queue. If you don't know any PHP, but you know how to apply a patch, you can peer review someone else's proposed solution to some problem in the issue queue. That's the big yellow section of stuff that we were looking at earlier, or for a chunk of the yellow stuff. That's sort of where, where it begins. If you know some PHP, you know JavaScript, you know CSS, you can write your own patches. So um, then this next group of steps on the ladder corresponds with um, if you've made it through those first set of steps and you want to contribute, but you don't necessarily want to make a big time commitment or you're not wanting to commit to a particular subsystem or component of Drupal core, there's a set of things you can do that you could reasonably do in like a two hour sitting to sort of help, help an issue that's in the, in the queue move forward and contribute to that issue. So uh, these two sections on the ladder correspond with the two most successful activities that we've come up with, uh, learn sprints and issue sprints. And the idea is that these are activities you do at a meetup. A learn sprint is a one hour activity where we get people to identify where they are on the ladder, or now there are many ladders where they are on some ladder, and then get people to pair up into two person teams and then work their way through the lesson that corresponds with that rung on the ladder to take the next step in climbing the ladder. An issue sprint is a two hour activity, also a great meetup activity. And the idea there is to pair people up into two person teams to work on some issue in the issue queue and move that issue forward. And then up at the top of the ladder, in the main Drupal ladder, we've got um, helping to maintain or, or working to be a maintainer. This is obviously not actually a meetup activity, but you know, the skills you build along the way are the kinds of things you need to be able to get there. And if you want to take on that level of responsibility, there's sort of a, a roadmap to get, to get there, we hope. So getting ready for DrupalCon Denver, where the Boston group wanted to share this idea and get other groups involved in this initiative, um, there were a, a few things we needed to reorganize. So first of all, we had outgrown our Google Doc version of the ladder. So um, people wanted to create more ladders. People wanted to create more specialized ladders. We also needed to, to in order to make this project more shareable, we needed to come up with a central place where people could go to to find lessons and materials for their meetups, uh, give people a way to keep track of which lessons they've completed and where they are on the different ladders, give people a way to contribute lessons and contribute their own ladders to the project, and a way to package up well-prepared lessons and materials. So um, we put together a proof of concept type website at drupalladder.org, and we had some meetings in Denver to talk about what is the minimum, the minimum viable product for a DrupalLadder.org type site look like, with the goal of relaunching that site this week in Drupal, at DrupalCon Munich. So here's what we came up with. Uh, now I'm actually going to, you guys all bear with me, change my display. Can you see my screen? Nice. All right. So come on. Resizing. Excellent. OK, so this might not all fit anymore. Sorry about that. Bummer. Maybe I can hide the dock. Hide it on. I think that basically gives us what we need. OK. OK, so um, this shows you how you can keep track of, of lessons you've completed. So here, I've done the first two lessons. Now I'm going to work on the getting started in the issue queue lesson. I follow this lesson. And then when I'm done with it, I check it completed. And if I go back to the main Drupal ladder, it, it shows, you know, it, it checks the next box. And you can also go to the Drupal ladder and you can sort of work your way up checking off items. So that's how the Drupal ladder works. Um, we've also set it up such that people can contribute lessons. So down at the bottom of the screen, if you're an authenticated user, you can click create new lesson. I'm actually going to fast forward us to lesson number two. It's a little more interesting. 
Um, take my word for it, we're creating three lessons here. Uh, okay, so scroll down, click create a new lesson. So anyone can create a user account, create their own lesson, give it a little description, and then under draft status, you can mark your lesson a work in progress if it's not finished and ready for other people. Maintainers, I'm gonna go ahead and make Brock my co-maintainer for this lesson so that he can also edit this lesson and help to keep it up to date. Under lesson information, project name, I can use project name to associate it with a particular module, a particular project on D.O. I can mark it as a core lesson or a contrib lesson. I can say this type of, this is a lesson about code, this is a lesson that corresponds with Drupal 7. Under prerequisites, this is where you can say, here are the kinds of things that you should do before you do this lesson. So for example, you should have completed lesson number one of the Lorem Ipsum lesson series before you work on lesson number two. Or you'll wanna have Drupal installed locally, go follow the install Drupal instructions before you do this lesson. So that's the kind of things you'd put in prereq prerequisites like you see here. So then an overview, you give a pithy, meaningful overview of your lesson. And then down in steps, this is like the meat of the lesson. The format we've been following is just numbered steps. One, two, three, four, here's how you follow this lesson. So people can contribute lessons. So fast forward, we've created three lessons. People can also contribute their own ladders. So here's what that looks like. So we've made three Lorem Ipsum lessons in addition to this Drupal ladder. I can create my own curriculum. So um, a curriculum is a group of lessons, and curriculums can be displayed as ladders. So scroll down to the bottom, click Create New Curriculum, give it a name, give it an overview, and then this, these are just node references to the lesson node types that we've created. So it's making a reference to lesson one, and then a reference to lesson two, and then lesson three, after we've added all the lessons that we want to include in our ladder or our curriculum, you can save it. And then back on the curriculums page, if you click the curriculums tab, you can see it gets added to that curriculums listing and there's a link to take you to your new ladder that you've contributed where people can now come, follow the ladder, keep track of what lessons they've completed. Um, excited to see smiles and nods on that one. Okay, yes, please, question. What kind of competence do you have to have? No, this is not for developers. This is for contributing. And I know everybody says contributing to core and then they run away because they're like, I, I'm not a developer. But you can contribute to core in a lot of ways and many of them have nothing to do with coding. So the first step on the ladder is to install a copy of Drupal locally. So if you know how to install Drupal and you even get walked through that in the first lesson, you can contribute. And then, so on the Drupal ladder, step one is really for everyone, step one. Um, people have expressed interest in being able to create their own ladders for more specialized things. And for ladders like that, that's the idea is that under prerequisites, you should sort of let people know here's what your starting point should be. So um, there's certainly a place for very technical ladders but the, the main Drupal ladder and a number of these ladders are, you know, the starting point is just follow these instructions to install Drupal and anyone can do it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys another lesson. I've sort of lost track of which lessons I'm showing, but um, or which parts I'm showing. Oh, right, okay. So pretend we've been working on the Lorem Ipsum la lesson for a while. It was marked draft, work in progress. It's got this red notice to let people know this is a work in progress. It says awaiting peer review because it hasn't been peer reviewed. When I'm satisfied with this lesson and I want the world to see it, I can mark it ready for review. And then when I click save, it turns orange and says ready for review. So this lets brave participants in learn sprints know, I think this is ready for someone to follow it. Please come check my lesson out and then peer review it and let us know if this is ready for other people to use. So now in the next lesson, we'll see how peer reviewing works. So people who are participating in Learn Sprints are following lessons, come read a lesson. At the end, they can leave a comment. Anyone with a user on learndrupal.org can, uh, drupalladder.org can post a comment. So they can say, this is a great lesson, really easy to follow. They can set the status to, this is final and up to date. Letting people know, you know, I've reviewed this, this is ready for action. 
when it's marked final and they save it, they save their comment, it turns green. And now you can see at the top, in addition to saying final up to date, it also says last peer reviewed on August 20th, 2012. So if you fast forward in time, lessons go stale, right? New modules come out, maybe no one updated the lesson. So um, someone later down the line can come back and post a comment saying, hey, I think this lesson is out of date. Something doesn't make sense here. So this is out of date. Hopefully if they're saying that, they'll leave some specific feedback for some lesson maintainer to now come and tidy it up. So this lesson was difficult to understand. I think maybe it's referencing an older version of module X or something like that. And then they can change the status in the same way we changed it a second ago. They can change it, change it to this lesson needs a revision. So everyone see how that works? So then when someone saves their comment and says needs a revision, it turns yellow. Now it says needs a revision at the top. And you can, again, see an updated last peer reviewed timestamp, date stamp. A couple other small bells and whistles. In addition to being able to um, check something completed, you can star lessons. So when you star something, you're marking it recommended. So that gets reflected in two places. One is in the listing of lessons, you can see a count of how many people have recommended this lesson. I'm going to pause it for a second. Wait, stop going, stop going. <laughs> so uh, in the lessons listing, you can see how many people have recommended something. Hopefully that helps steer you toward you know, good, useful lessons. Additionally, you can see people's listings of recommendations. So for example, if I know Addie's a lullabot and I just trust her judgment, I might want to go follow her you know, recommended lessons. That's very suspect. Because you know, um, she's got a bunch of recommendations on DrupalLadder.org. So um, that's recommendations. Last but not least, we have bookmarks. And that's really just, uh, you can click the little book icon and then you have your own personal listing of my bookmarks that you can use. And that's for anything you want to bookmark, for whatever reason you want to bookmark things. OK, I'm going to flip the display again. Back to PowerPoint. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. See how it goes. Woo! Nice. Well done. <laughs> OK, we can talk through these. Nicely things. done. Bookmark. OK. So, with these pieces in place, <laughs> with, with these pieces in place, what? <laughs> with these pieces in place, uh, we hope that we can help user groups run, um, make lessons, contribute lessons, run learn sprints and issue sprints. And our hope is that seven months into the Drupal 8 release cycle, so at a comparable moment in time to the, the Drupal 7 release cycle when we hatched this idea, our hope is that we can increase uh, the rate of contributions to 1% of active users on, on Drupal.org contributing to Drupal 8. So um, that's what we're shooting for. We so there's the overview. <laughs> and uh, let's just take a, a quick minute to review where we've been review our goals, and then uh, to talk about where we're going and how we're going to get there, I'm going to hand it over. So where we've been between October and March of last year, uh, we did our Boston experiment, sort of proof of concept, came up with this idea of learn sprints and issue sprints, came up with a couple proof of concept lessons. Uh, at DrupalCon Denver in March, we pitched this to other user groups, and we said, we want to get 10 more groups outside of Boston involved in this initiative to sort of prove other groups think this is useful too, and you know, we have a fighting chance of increasing you know, contribution to 1%. We want to relaunch Drupal.org uh, with something usable to support this initiative. Launch a 1.0 distro, so that's the code base for Drupal.org that would have lessons Drupal packaged ladder. up in it. Thank you, DrupalLadder.org. <laughs> we, we changed the name of the initiative. Um, and then item four, which wasn't a goal in March, but I think is uh, an important miles, milestone at this point, starting a steering committee to get more people involved in um, spreading the work around to get more and more people involved. So checking in on our goals, uh, the goal of 10 user groups involved, we have nailed that goal, I'm proud to report. So I can tell you at least 10 user groups um, that I know by name, and I think that there are more. So those include Washington, D.C., Alexandria, Virginia, Baltimore, Maryland, and Columbia. I think that's four, but Brock actually counts them as one, so we'll call that one. Uh, Boulder, Colorado. Cleveland, Ohio, Houston, Texas, Brighton, UK, Copenhagen, Denmark, 
somewhere in Singapore, I think two cities in Florida, definitely one city in Florida. The US federal government, uh, Drupalists have just started their own Drupal for Gov Drupal Ladder Meetup last week, and they've got another event coming up at the end of the month. Um, bringing us to 10, we have an online Drupal Ladder Meetup that Tech Girl Geek started in a Drupal Hangout. And honorable mention, even though it's not a Learn Sprint or Issue Sprint type meetup, we have a presence now in Lullabotlandia with Drupal Eyes Me videos for the Drupal Ladder project. So, um, so I feel really good about having blown goal number one out of the water uh, for this project. <laughs> yeah, give yourself a hand on that one. So to the goals of relaunching DrupalLadder.org and 1.0 distro release, we are really, really, really close to the minimum viable product outline that we established at DrupalCon Denver. Um, I'm not 100% satisfied yet with um, the downloadable distro. I think that, that we need to polish up some rough edges to make the lessons, the code lessons that people download easier to use. But I feel optimistic that we can have this ready by the end of Sprint Day on Friday. So um, at the end of the session, you'll see opportunities to get involved if you want to be involved in that. I think we'll, we'll, we'll have this done by the end of DrupalCon Munich. Um, and then last but not least, we're launching a steering committee here to get more people uh, involved in leading the project. So um, here's a timeline that we pitched to DrupalCon Denver that we're still working towards, I think. So these are the first set of goals between DrupalCon Denver and DrupalCon Munich that I just walked everyone through. Then next we've got between now and DrupalCon Portland in May, uh, we want to add 30 more user groups to our numbers, 30 more user groups doing Learn Sprints and Issue Sprints. And we want to get curriculums developed for major Drupal 8 initiatives. So we can start, start sort of priming the pumps with Learn Sprints with people who are able to contribute to Drupal 8. We want to, between uh, DrupalCon Portland and the next DrupalCon Europe, which is when we're targeting the Drupal 8 release, we want to have every active user group running a uh, issue sprint. And we want to identify two out of 100 active users on Drupal.org as potential contributors. They haven't contributed yet, but we've identified them as p potential contributors. And then between uh, the release of Drupal 8 and the following DrupalCon, sometime in 2014 in the United States, we want to have one out of 100 active users on Drupal.org have contributed to Drupal 8. So that is what we're shooting for, I think. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Brock, who's going to talk about uh, where we're going with issue sprints. Hi, guys. I'm Brock. Um, so yeah, issue sprints are the, the two-hour meetups where you actually get a group together, pair up, and start working on issues. So I, I see it as where like this initiative really, where the claws really dig in, I suppose, because that's when people actually start writing code, start reviewing patches, start getting involved in and contributing back to these issues. So as Brian said, the, the goal is to get 30 more groups hosting these events on a regular basis. Um, so toward that end, I, I have a few things I want to work on to make make it easier for people to run these events. My, my biggest concern is making it easy for people to facilitate these events and get the support they need to make it happen and not have to worry too much about doing so, I guess. Um, because it's daunting to, to say I'm going to lead a sprint without ever having done so. Um, so to that end, yes, uh, we have some documentation on DrupalLadder.org. I want to beef that up some more and uh, make it easier to read right now. Right now, it's just kind of a jumble of things that we've learned along the way. Um, so it could use some organization. Um, we have a new issue tracking tool. Thanks to the core mentoring folks, Jess and Tim are here. Um, they have built a, an awesome task task tracking tool that they use for the core mentoring hours each week. Um, and they have graciously allowed us to make use of it for these issue sprints as well, so that we can kind of keep track of, um, you know, for example, I'm, I'm from Washington, D.C., so we have a set of issues that our group is kind of working on, and we can keep track of where they are and where they stand and who's working on it so that we're not all, you know, stepping on toes trying to do the same thing at the same time. Um, that tool is super handy, could use a little work. There are some bugs and stuff that I'm, I'm going to help out with, uh, and hopefully we can... <laughs> there's no bugs. There's one last time I looked, but... <laughs> Most of those were feature requests. So it's... <laughs> I can help out with that as much as I can, and, and hopefully get a, a sort of a separate instance set up so that we can kind of manage our own version of this task tracker and not have to bother them too much to, to do things like promote users to, <laughs> to higher levels and things like that. Um, and finally, I, I want to... I haven't figured out how to do this yet, but I would like to help set something up to mentor people in between issue sprints. What I found is that 
people come to these issue sprints, they start working on an issue, and then they keep working on it for the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, someone else will review their patch, and they'll come back with a new version and, and things like that. So people, um, you know, they come to the issue sprint, they get excited about what they're working on, and they, they keep working on it. So I want to make sure that somebody is there to kind of help those people out in the in-between when they're not actually in a room with a group of people um, working on stuff. So if anyone is at all interested in running an issue sprint back in your hometown, I would love to talk to you about well, where you're from, what you'd like to do, uh, why you haven't already, what you might be worried about. I want to make, like I said, I want to make it easy for people to run these events. Um, it's really not that difficult. Uh, they've just kind of winged it in Boston. Brian kind of told me how they had been doing it, and I did the same thing in DC, more or less. Uh, but we just kind of made it up as we went along. So anyone can really do it. You don't need to know a whole lot. Um, but I'd love to talk to you if you're interested in, in doing that. And we can talk, check with me afterward and we'll, we'll, we'll chat, I guess. But next, Addie would like to talk about lessons. I would like to talk about lessons. Like, no, no, that's fine. I, I'm good. Um, I got bullet points, it's all in my head. Um, before, so uh, when we're talking about lessons content, we're talking about like when you actually go to like drupalladder.org and you're looking at lessons like how do I get started? Where do I go? What are my next steps? That's what we're talking about with that. Um, and before I sort of talk about like the, the future plans like I want to do around organizing, I just want to sort of explain like my involvement and where I'm coming from with this is that, so I, I attended Brian's session in Denver and I got really excited about this concept. Um, and so I went back to, I live in Copenhagen and we didn't actually have any meetups going on, but I thought this was a great thing to create a meetup around. So we started doing regular meetups and again, I just, I found uh, uh, somebody who was willing to give us some uh, space in their office on an evening and I just posted, hey, come meet and let's work this thing out together. And people showed up, it was pretty awesome. Um, and, and we did learn sprints where we started on those, those bottom steps of the ladder and people were having problems with the lessons. And so they would come to me and be like, I don't understand, what's this? And we would work it out and figure it out. And I told them, leave a comment on the lesson and then later on, I could go back and I cleaned it all up and I actually added that to lesson. And then when we had the future less learn sprints, we didn't have those problems and questions. And so it just really, like we were really actually improving things and making things better, not just for us in our little community, but for anybody else who wanted to learn how to install Drupal locally or learn how to install Git. Um, and I also, uh, tangentially, uh, one of the guys who attended one of those very first sprints was actually from Singapore, and he's the one who started the Singapore meetup um, that's going on. So that was pretty awesome. Um, but so that's, I've been really excited about it, and I've seen it like working for my local community, our local meetup. Like people are very excited about it, and it's really easy for people to, I mean, these are people who are sitting down and installing Drupal or installing Git for the first time um, and contributing back and making it better for everybody. And that kind of stuff just gets me excited. So, um, so I'm excited about the lesson stuff and I really want to make it better and smoother. So I've kind of chunked my, my general goals around what we want to do with lessons and priorities in two periods. One is now between now and December, which is feature freeze for Drupal 8. So that's when they're going to stop putting lots of new features into the Drupal 8 code base and start to smooth things out. Um, and then, another period of time from that until DrupalCon Portland. And so in this first stage, between now and December, I feel like we need to get the existing stuff we have in order um, so that we have a good base to work from to add new material. Um, so we need to go through and review the existing lessons. A lot of the existing lessons are sort of in a need to review state. Um, and we need to go through and re review those. Some of them need revision, there are comments, and we need to look at those comments and figure out how do we improve the lesson to address those comments, clean that stuff up, and do that kind of stuff. So, so that's the first thing that really just needs to get done. Uh, we also have some lessons on the existing ladder that say uh, stuff goes here. <laughs> so we need to actually fill some of these lessons out as well. Um, and then I also want to start outlining what new lessons and ladders we need. Like we have this, this core kind of ladder which starts with installing Drupal and works your way up. But if I want to actually get involved in um, the user system or something like that or the file system um, and actually sort of try and drill in a bit more, um, we don't have lessons around that. We don't even really have much information about where to go to get started in that. So I want to outline, if I want to know more about the, how the file system works and really get involved in helping it, 
uh, what what information do I need to know? Like how I'm like what's the first questions you ask? Like let's outline what those questions are. Let's figure out who in the Drupal community knows the answer to these questions and have it all sort of outlined and ready to go so we know what information we're actually looking for. So that's to get us prepared up till December. And before like to take that on or make that easier, I have two tasks uh, that I have listed up here that I want to do this week. Um, and I want to finish that up by Friday. And that is one, I want to create some standards for writing our lessons. Um, you know, how, because a lot of people like, I have information in my head, but I don't know how to actually explain it to other people. Or, you know, when we have stuff, different instructions, we have steps, but there are different ways of doing steps and explaining how to click things. And when someone's trying to learn something and read something, having a consistent presentation for that makes things a lot easier for everybody. So, and I've, I've written a couple of, of, of books, uh, two editions of using Drupal, which has a lot of step-by-step -step instructions in it. And we found when we were writing the book, we have, we have our own internal standards that we used every single time. So in every chapter, even if different authors, we have co-authors on the book, we all were using the same standard, so the book was consistent. Um, and I think that's also a really important thing to, to bring to this project. So I want to nail down what our standards are, or at least a first draft of that, uh, by the end of the day on Friday. So that's number one. Um, and then number two is having larger meta discussions around how we integrate with other documentation that already exists. Um, Drupal.org handbooks, um, but other stuff on the web, like things around like Git and things like that. Like there's a lot of information out there and I don't want us to duplicate effort. I want us to make the best use of what's out there, but also still provide people with this really clear path on how to get where they need to go. And that's a larger discussion I'm going to be having all week. If anybody has thoughts around that or wants to talk about that kind of stuff, feel free to find me. Um, and I'll definitely be having conversations uh, around that on Friday as well. Because I want to, us to get some clarity around that before we start going off and writing a million things um, that we may not need to. Uh, so that's, that's a lot to get done <laughs> between now and December. Um, but I feel pretty confident. A lot of this base stuff is already there. It's just a matter of, finishing it off, sort of crossing the T's and dotting the I's. And then once we have that, uh, starting in December, once we have feature freeze, we have all these outlines for what we need to know in Drupal 8, let's write it. And like just start working through it, start finding people in the community who know these things and can answer the questions. Like to write a lesson, you don't have to know everything, but you need to be willing to learn. You need to be willing to say, okay, I don't understand how this whole, like, what's going on here in the file system. Like, I know how to use it in the UI, and I can write those instructions. But now I need to dive further. Who knows that information? Well, let me, let me go talk to them and interview them about what this is. And then I can bring that back and write a lesson on that. A lot of contributors to core, those, like, hardcore developers, uh, they would love for people to understand what they do and to help them. <laughs> and they will do all kinds of things. Like, trust me, they'll talk to you about what it is, um, especially if they know that that's going to go back and help spread the word and spread the knowledge of, of how this is working and come back to help them. So you can do a lot of things without actually understanding or doing the code yourself. So that's, that's my plan, um, and that's the stuff I'm excited about. Um, I will be sprinting on Friday as well, all day. Um, and I will also say, if you come to the sprint, we have these limited edition pink pony stickers. <laughs> they have a pretzel on the butt. Um, but as ponies are want to do. <laughs> you know, the pony wanted a pretzel. But uh, anyway, these are limited edition stickers. And they only, we're trying to, to give those out to contributors. So if you show up at the sprint, instant contributor. So that's my pitch. And I will now pass it on to Karen, who's going to talk about learn sprints. Oh, I guess I have to come closer. Here we go. Get comfortable. Shimmy, shimmy. Okie dokie. Okay. So, whoops. So, I'm Karen um, Casio Tech Girl Geek on, well, everything. <laughs> um, and I've been dubbed now the uh, Learn Sprint Captain. And what does that really mean? Well, I too got really excited in Denver. I went to the Drupal Ladder sessions and I was like, wow, this is such a great idea. And I was running Drupal Chicks meetups and it wasn't really getting a lot of life into it. And I thought this is a great way to pull some life into it. Not only do I not have to present every time, come up with something new and exciting to present, but it gives an opportunity to, to, for more people to learn how to contribute to core, get some more involvement. So now the Drupal Chicks have op in the Boulder, Denver area have opened it up to the whole community 
and we now have learned sprints. And after we've gone through this rate, it's going to be a few more learned sprints. We're going to start opening up issue sprints, too. Um, so what does being the captain mean? Well, not sure. Still, it's, we're still growing that idea. But what it will mean, um, as Brian said, we want to get more, like, over at least 30 groups together in the next year, right? Is that the? By, the, by May. By May. By Portland. Right, this is the Europe one. Sorry. <laughs> wow, time flies. Um, so how are we going to do this? Well, getting the word out, getting people interested. Addie was saying someone came to hers and then went to Singapore and started one. I had someone who, he was temporarily in Denver, and so he came into a couple of mine, and he's like, this is such a great idea. He pinged me a couple of days ago, how do I start one at a BOF, at a camp that he's at in Connecticut? And so that's one thing is let's get BOFs going so we can do small learn sprints. Um, I want to get the resources ready for everybody, so I'm build, going to be building a kit online. There's some very basic instructions on how to get a learn sprint started. I'm going to elaborate on those and build a, a kit. Also, we're gonna, part of that kit will be a registration form, so you can register your groups. And the registration is a couple of different reasons. So I can stay in contact with you, so we can keep talk, get the conversation going. I can help you in any way you need. Um, we can also have a count towards our group um, count total, so we know when we get the 30 or more. 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 <laughs> 30 is a minimum. That is not the maximum. <laughs> um, it's also, I can help you with planning, and some of that, those ideas will go online. Um, as they were saying, I, I've done one, out of necessity, I, actually, one of my Drupal, one of my, my second or third learn sprint, I think it was, we didn't have a lot of attendees, physical attendees, so I did a Drupal hangout. So it was both. We had two, actually, besides myself, in-house, in the office, or in the location. And we had another three or four online, which was kind of neat. This last one, my husband is now working in it out of state, and so I didn't really want to get a babysitter to do my meetup, I have to admit, <laughs> for an expensive meetup. So I decided to do the whole entire um, Drupal ladder on Drupal ha I mean Google Hangouts. And I got a lot of really good feedback. I got a lot of people who said, you know, I, I can really only go to one meetup a month, so this gives me an opportunity to go to a second one, learn some more of how to contribute, but I don't have to leave my house. I can still be home or at the coffee shop or wherever. And so we were able to do it. Um, how to get them, get people more interested. One of the things, feedback I got was demo a rung. So I have started demoing. So this, that, that hangout, I actually demoed how to install Drupal. Next time I'll do how to install Git. And so if that person's still on there, we can do it together or they can move ahead and we can work together. So some ideas, I plan to put that in the kit. Um, we can have a call. if you need, feel like I really want to get this done but I don't know how to get started, I'm happy to talk to you and give you some ideas and we can talk. Um, some of these guys did that with me. We did a lot of IRC chatting mostly, but, which I can do that too. We have a, an IRC channel, which Brian will bring up in here in a minute, and we can chat on IRC and it's like, how do I get this started? And Brock and Addie and I are also doing another um, session tomorrow e evening, it's like an evening pretty much, on how to get sessions, how to get make your meetups great, and one of the things is just do it. So if you have this desire to do this, just do it. Start it up, and we'll help you get successful, whatever you need to do. Um, pretty much, yeah, so I'm the point of contact. That's really much anything else I can do for you. If you have any feedback, I said this is something we're growing, and this is, this is your ladder, as everything in Drupal, it's not, it's not going to work without people contributing back. So if you do something and you realize, hey, this is not working, this is really working for us, let us know and I can add it to the kit and we'll keep this going and let's, let's make it happen because this is, this is so awesome. And that's it. So mm -hmm. that should we tell people a little bit about what's going on at the end of the week and then open up questions? Sure. So I can speak. Oh, yeah. So uh, with that, we'll just uh, make a few announcements about the end of the week and open it up for questions here. So um, Friday, we have a code sprint from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So whether you want to help sprint on lesson writing or on code projects, uh, contributing to core, uh, we're collaborating with the core office hours folks on that one. Um, we are working on the distro that we want to 
make releasable. We'll be working on DrupalLadder.org. So there are lots of opportunities for people at all different le levels to be involved on Friday at the Code Sprint. Um, also, Encoders Lounge. Um, if anyone wants to sprint on any of the stuff, I will certainly be spending time there. And so, you know, follow Drupal Ladder, hashtag Drupal Ladder on Twitter if you want to get involved in that. Um, we're on group stuff. So please go to DrupalLadder.org and make yourself a user account and start this, start getting involved. We've got a group on groups.drupal.org slash Drupal Ladder. We're on Twitter, Drupal Ladder, IRC, Drupal Dash Ladder. And then um, here's the rest of our contact info. And Addy fell off this somehow. So I'll edit that. Aww. Sorry. Ouch. Um, I'm add one son on Drupal.org and on Twitter. So yeah. I'll add you right now. You can always, can always ping me. Questions? We also have, by the way, uh, Drupal Ladder as a Twitter account. Oh, there's oh we do? Account. There is? We do. All right. Cool. For the, for the <laughs> sake of the recording, there is a Drupal Ladder Twitter account as well. We still have nine minutes, so we can. <laughs> well, he's sorting that out. Anyone else have any other questions or feedback or uh... ideas? Yeah. Could you can I, can you come up to the mic? And oh yeah. Can if you the could question? please. They are recording Sorry. all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Front and center. Let's have a look at you. Okay. Um, you may gather from the t-shirt. For, for the, the recording. It's a gentleman in a Joomla shirt. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> for, <laughs> um, so as you may have gathered, I'm the Joomla guy, and I'm speaking tomorrow about Joomla. So, I mean, th it's exactly the same. You know, we have exactly the same issues. There were just two two questions I wanted to ask. One um, was um, obviously the vast majority of people actually don't live near a meetup. So, what's the you know? Have you any thoughts about how to address that? And the second question, because I always like to get two in, is it's all in English. Do you have any plans to make the material available in other languages? Do you want to so speak I'll to the first? You can do the first one. So, um, not, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I don't. I, I guess you might have missed that, but I've been doing a couple of them in with um, Drupal, Google. I keep saying Google, Drupal, Google Hangouts, which has been working, but it it cuts off at ten people. But that works, or you can do like a Skype. So we actually, I've been doing that, and I've gotten people from, so far it's been US because of time zones, but I've had a couple people say, oh, I would have joined you if I was awake. <laughs> um, so that really works for like, so you can do Skype, and you can still share your screen and see the other people. Well, Skype, I guess you can't see the other people unless you have the upgraded version of Skype now. But um, Google Hangouts, you can. So I have been doing that, so starting to get remote. And I would also say people can start meetups, and even if it's only two people, <laughs> start a meetup. Um, that's like just a big thing generally uh, in the Drupal world, whether you're doing ladder stuff or not. Yeah. Um, I can speak to, to question two, because I live in Denmark. Um, I'm not Danish, um, so, uh, and I, wow, Danish is hard, but, uh, but I do live in Denmark, and, and so I started the meetup group in, specifically around the Drupal ladder. This was not our existing meetup even. Our existing one was just a, a beer meetup. Um, we live in Denmark, but um, so, but uh, but I asked them because this is something I was really curious about. And we were very curious about in terms of the language stuff, and and part of it, of course, is going to depend where you are. So I live in Denmark, and I would say ninety five percent of the population speaks English, um, and. But when I asked them, you know, what, how would you guys feel about having this stuff in Danish? I mean, how 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 much of a pain in the ass is it to have? Uh, this all in English and a lot of them said we prefer it in English because that's how we encounter things generally in other communities right that's that's not the like if you go further south say down to France and stuff like that people are going to want to obviously translate it but at the end of the day this community does communicate in English and as you go further into community involvement, inevitably, you end up needing to use English because the, the, that's how everything is, is, is written. So there's a certain point where a lot of people end up needing to use English depending on how, what level they go to. Great. Uh, we have the same issue. Yes, but totally. Is, there's a cutoff, to, absolutely. Yeah, yes, when you get to the top level, you need a common language, but you're, set, you're saying right now that the entry level, you need English. Well, on Drupal.org, yeah, France, it's true. You go to France and Spain, and it's yeah. Um, I know I go to all the general events. If I go to France, Spain, or Italy, 
they don't understand me at all. Yeah. So, no, I mean, this is, this is definitely, I mean, the thing is, like, people can contribute in their local communities in their language, but to communicate on Drupal.org in the issue queue, you have to use English. And so we do have that barrier, and it's very low in the chain. And that's, that's that, that simply that the nature. So yeah, it is very much so. I'd like to just chime in quickly, too. Since alpha one of this distribution, we've had a translations directory in the code base that runs the website that people can download with lessons. And no one's contributed a translation yet. So I mean, we've been open since day one for people. <laughs> yeah, the website telling everybody about it is only in English, so why is a uh, yeah. French person even know about it? Yeah. I speak English, but I welcome people to post lessons in the language they want to start in. That's, yeah. why, you only have, that's why you only have English. OK. I, I would I, put in that. I think we're ready for the next question. Yeah, yeah. I would put in that Drupal does have a very broad multilingual community. So this, the, the translations directory that he's talking about isn't, that isn't just Drupal ladder. Like that functionality is part of Drupal core. So yeah, just, we, we have a multilingual international <laughs> community. There, there, are, there are a lot of but things, but yeah. What I was going to address was the first question that you asked. Um, so in addition to what the ladder people have been doing, that we had sort of a parallel effort that started around the same time last summer, interestingly enough. Um, I'm, uh, my, name, my nick is XJM, um, and Tim Blunkett and I do these um, office hours in IRC. There's this core mentoring time that we have. So we have a scheduled time twice a week where um, anyone can drop in and we just like pair them up with an issue they can work on based on their skills and experience and so forth. So there's a number of us that volunteer like to donate that time once or twice a week. And we go through we go through our issue queue and find issues that have like low hanging fruit in them. You know, we need someone to correct this comment to our standards, or this this issue needs automated tests. And so we do a lot of the same stuff that the lessons on the ladder cover, but it, it's it's more like piecemeal, grab your own, pick your own one piece. And that has worked really really well for engaging people in a lot of different time zones. Um, we get. Um, I think we get some, like it usually ranges, but the, there's, there's one time slot in the evenings where we get, we'll get like two or three people at a time. And then the one that's during the North American day, we'll often get as many as 20 people at a time who are working on issues with a number of mentors. So that's another thing you can do that sort of takes some of, some of the, the physical part out of it is using that text-based communication. And that's worked really well for us. And if you're interested in hearing more about that, you can talk to me about it. We're also, we also do um, in-person sprints for, for the core mentoring. And there will be one this Friday, like Addie mentioned earlier. Um, and so if you want, you could come and see what we do there, too. I'll <laughs> so that, that was all I was going to say. So that, and that, which leads me into the reason that I'm sending the mic, which is I would invite you, if you're interested in um, actually experiencing some of the kinds of tasks they're talking about, the kinds of issues they work on in the issue sprints, um, all the people, I actually haven't talked to Tech Girl Geek about it yet, but everyone else sitting up at that table there is also in contact with us about the sprint that we're doing this coming Friday, um, which will be here in the big room. Um, so if, you want, if you're interested in contributing to CORE yourself, you haven't started yet, you, you think you might want to, this is a really great chance to come and like, have someone standing next to you who will help you find an issue to work on, and maybe you can get your first CORE patch in. Yeah, we're actually also planning on doing a, um, a workshop. Uh, the Drupalize Me team is going to do a workshop on, at the beginning of the sprint day. So for people who really are like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not going to show up, we're going to have a three-hour workshop to handhold you through what is the issue queue? What is this IRC thing people talk about? Uh, how do you install a local version of Drupal using the Drupal ladder lessons? So you can sort of see it in action as well. And then also getting you all the way up to installing Git if that's what you want to do. So, uh, so we'll be providing that in the morning on Friday. And then you can like be set loose upon the world of issues if you, if you feel like you want to sort of have, have like a real like starting at zero start to the day. I think we need to go soon, so we should probably take one more question. And also, I want to make sure people know we've got Drupal Acquia shirts up here for anyone who has participated in a Drupal ladder activity or will bring one back to their meetup. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> uh, I think the Drupal ladder is a, a great initiative, so good on you for that. Um, I can also attest to the fact that the in-person sprints are really useful. We actually had an event um, down in Australia um, earlier this year where we actually sponsored one of the people to actually come, and he was able to actually get his first core commit in. Um, had never actually been uh, a contributor to Drupal at all before. So, and we did that through a lot of the same types of activities that the Drupal ladder is. Um, all that being said, my question actually is, because I also run a Drupal group in Sydney, um, 
and I'm planning on actually taking the Drupal ladder back to it. Um, but the difficulty I have is actually that most of the people that are in our community are, they're not motivated to actually contribute to, to core because of the fact that they're still trying to actually overcome their problems of getting their own sites done. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to put together resources that are similar in nature to put together kind of a step-by-step -step process for them to actually do tasks to get site building stuff done and theming stuff done to actually get their own things done. And I'd be kind of curious to get your guys' comments on, you know, I, I think getting more people into core is great, but I think we also need to be able to kind of, the learning curve is also more about people getting their own sites done, not just contributing to core. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that that is totally right on. You know, we obviously need to meet people where they're at, and the first step is obviously just making it easier to learn Drupal. So um, in Washington, D.C., we just started a federal government Drupal for Gov meetup. And so the idea there is it's really a, a niche-specific meetup. And the idea is climb the Drupal for Gov ladder. And you know, at, at the top of the ladder, there is a community of interest that is interested in sort of a subset of things that they'd like to influence in core. Got to cut you off. Time. We got to go. Oh, we are